This week we're crafting Grave Lord Nito from Dark Souls on this episode of Frankie D Crafter. This is actually my second attempt at making this craft. The first time it didn't go so well for a lot of reasons. This was supposed to be the first build on the channel actually. But thanks to some technical difficulties, I had to settle for the Beholder builds. I'm glad I couldn't make this video back then. This time around, I was better equipped. For this project, you will need a few skulls. Hope you save some of those Halloween toys and Halloween decorations. These skull beads are perfect for this project. You will also need some Halloween decorations. The last ingredient will be some cheap skeleton miniatures that we will scavenge bones from. Let's get this project started. I use aluminum to make the structure for the body. I need this to be top heavy. I know this might bite me in the butt later in the build when I have to base it, but I'll cross that bridge when I get there. From here we will work our way down. I think this bead will look just fine as the main head. Here I use hot glue but I like to reinforce it with PVA glue. As for the hole on the top, I'll be filling that up with some air dry clay. I'll be adding a little bit of PVA glue to that too. Makes it stronger and it helps it not crack. For this next part, you will need a decoration with a spine. This crocodile skeleton is the perfect sacrifice for this build. We'll save the tip of the tail for later, but the rest will be used around the neck area. This will make the main skull stand out from the rest of the bones we'll be applying to the rest of the body. I will be adding more aluminum to the arms now. Again, top heavy. I want this to tower over my players without actually making them huge. I want this post to say, come at me bro, if you wanna die. It's actually even safer to pin the arms. One of my favorite things about this character is how intimidating he looks without having to actually express malice. I think that's something I failed to recognize on my first attempt to build Nito. As you may have noticed, I decided to use the skull beads only. Usually I like variety to show scale, but for this build I figure it would end up working against it. Sometimes less is more, plus these beads are 10 times cheaper than these skulls. We need to scavenge for more interesting bones. I would prefer to use skeleton legs on this part, but these bones will have to do. We're working with what we have here. I use really cheap skeletons here too. Also, as you may have noticed, every time I glue something, I use PVA glue as well as hot glue for the sake of strength. And just so you know, I also cover the aluminum with PVA glue on the areas that I'm already done with. It actually helps me paint it later on. And this is what I like to call the freestyle step, or when I Frankenstein the crap out of it. This is where you have to trust your intuition and do what you feel is right. I find bones that will mimic the human anatomy, but I also wrap some ribs around the arms to emphasize shape. It's similar to techniques used in drawing, using lines to guide the shape you are drawing. We don't want to make it symmetrical, it just wouldn't make sense in my opinion. It's not like he made sure that all the dead bodies on his left matched all the ones on his right. Let's give him the rest of the spine. Give him a hand, but no thumbs, don't forget it, no thumbs. Bring it around town and get the guy a leg.
After we do that, we take it to my favorite air dry clay. Never get this from Amazon. Let's cover the aluminum on the front and don't worry about smooth. It will look better if you give the clay some type of texture. Just make sure that you make the bones stand out. Those are important on this build. Sword time. I trace a design or shape really on top of a popsicle stick. That's it. Then I try to damage it as much as I can without actually damaging the structure of the wood. I hot glue it and PVA glue it. To be honest, this is probably one of those steps that I find stressful. I'm worried that the bond won't be enough. That's why I add a thumb later. I hope it helps me secure the sword in place. Let's move on. Come on man, we need to make this sword more interesting. Luckily, we're working with a material that tends to make things twice as badass and 10 times more metal. I primer and dry brush. I make sure to get my white highlights nice and bright. I continue with the linen white and then wash them with a nice darkish brown. Clean up the highlight areas for better effects. I paint this in parts because I assume that the cloak I plan to make for it is gonna make it impossible for me to reach some areas. I don't want to make extra obstacles for myself, not this time around. I actually thought this one through. It probably helped that I messed on the first one in general to begin with, so you can count it as me thinking ahead or not here. My biggest failure in my opinion on this first build was the cloak. Look at that mess. It's redemption time. Air dry clay to the rescue. One of the biggest plus of this clay, it's actually a bit flexible when it dries. My proof comes in the shape of this abolith I made a while back. Don't forget to check out that video. Hit you with that self promotion, son. It's been a while and so far, no cracks and it's still pretty flexible. Oh man, there's a your mama joke somewhere in there. I should not be writing scripts this late at night. All right, let's get back on track. The plan is to create a rag-like texture. I flatten out the clay as much as possible and then I start to tear at it. Check out how the clay forms a perfect texture and shape for what we needed. It's time to Frankenstein the crap out of this one more time. It's easier to start from the bottom by layers. Come back to the areas that need more texture. It's best if the rags are texture before placing them on the mini. Also, make sure to glue them with PVA glue. This brand of air dry clay and PVA glue go hand in hand, like soulmates. I primer it twice, once with regular black acrylic and then one more time with black Mod Podge mix. It's necessary to make sure moisture won't activate the clay again. I'm not proud of this next step, <laughs> but at the same time I am, so I drill this thing to the base. I mean, if you're looking for a regular straightforward tutorial, uh, I might not be your guy, but if you're looking for some guy that's gonna drill a mini onto a base, I think you should definitely subscribe. I make it so that the screw doesn't offset the base. 
I'm not a barbarian here. But if you're smarter than me, I would suggest you come up with your own step here. Don't be a Frankie. I'm still working on my base game, don't judge. If you guys know of any artists that should keep an eye on for that, please give me some suggestions in the comment section below. I'm always looking to get better. We are making a fireball for this guy. This will take a few trial and errors to master, or at least to make it look good enough. Get a little bit of moisture on the metal pan. Use hot glue and start pulling at it. Make it wavy or however you like the fire. Get a good variety of shapes and sizes. Get a toothpick to be able to work on the fireball comfortably. My only regret was not making the middle piece long enough. Mismatch the rest of the shapes and get the fireball you want. Don't forget to use the heat from the glue gun to continue shaping the fire as you work on it. Painting fire is best done backwards, starting with your yellow and working your way up to red. Or if you're a painting master, working your way up to black. I'm not there yet, so I'm not attempting that yet. Gluing this fireball now will open up a gate that I've purposely kept closed for many years. OSL. To study how this secondary light source will affect your mini, you can always use a light like the one I used in the lighthouse build. The best part about this light, aside from being on steroids, is that it changes colors, giving you a wider range of effects to study from. I start off with a red dry brush and more or less hit it where I remember the light was hitting it. I work my way down to yellow and then to white. I wish I had something enlightening to say here, but I don't. I actually go back and forth between these two looks to see which one I like best until I realize that if I keep adding paint to this, I'm gonna get rid of a lot of detail on the build. This is one of those things where you just have to get good. I was about to give him a glowing purple sword as well, but that's a challenge for another day. Instead, I gave him an interesting purple cloak. Something I realized while I was working on the skulls was that I should have worked on the paint while they were still wet. I have gotten into the bad habit of applying one color at a time and continuing only after I'm done with that one color. I think I got into this bad habit because of the way I present my videos. This time, I'll simply show you how I wet blend. The last step is to add a purple wash to bring it all together and call it a day. I feel like this was a redemption build. I like both my builds, but I look at the progress I've made by starting this channel. I was all over the place on the first build. I knew what I wanted, but failed to execute it. This time around, I was able to do everything better, plus more. And I see some places that still need improvement. There's always next craft. Don't hesitate to let me know what you think might need more work. And I'm talking about any of my videos. And like always, let's thank the Patrons, they're the best. And special thanks to all the Patrons on Discord, I've been having a blast talking to you about builds and talking to you just in general about like D&D &D stories. 
It's it's made my days a few nights actually. Pretty cool stuff. And please, if you'd like to support the channel and keep this going, don't forget to check out my link in the description below. It'll take you to Patreon and there you can see some of the options on how you can support the channel. Thank you very much again. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Fun fact, Nito was one of the bosses in Dark Souls I beat on my first try. Mainly because I ran around admiring it so much and so long that by the time I actually got to fight it, I already knew all his moves.